Greetings and welcome. My name is Michael Miller. This is a Michael Miller Trademark Training Video. Out to you because you're watching. Thank you and welcome. It's meant for Michael Miller Pilates, Licensed Affiliates, The Corner Core, my patrons, and anyone interested in surviving and thriving as a Pilates instructor or a student, which means practitioner without trying to turn around and teach it, just trying to get better at it and doing it for yourself, which is the ultimate target, right? Well, I'm all consumed with, can you see the nature? That's a rock that's in a spiral. <clears throat> here, here, see ammonites, ammonites. An ex extinct group of mollusks, which, along with the dinosaurs, died out at the close of the Crustaceous period, about 65 million years ago. So ammonites, ammonites, these things, these things, died out about 65 million years ago. Gets better. The first ammonites are recognized in rocks of Devonetian age 365 to 390 million years ago. They are related to the present day Nautilus. So, what am I pointing to in, in this? Is first of all rotation and the, the, the expanding spiral that life manifests itself in. Now, what makes this as a shell different from, from this, maybe like this, this as a shell? See what that looks like, right? See what that looks like, right? Okay, meaning... MMP requires imagination. For me to say, imagine an axis that's going right through this shell, and that right around that axis there's a rotational dynamic that this shell is capable of making. Okay. That's my whole point about what the deal is with core new tension in the body. It comes from, first of all, the ability to make a rotational dynamic, and different than this, see, through this axis, this shell also expands, but what? It expands asymmetrically. It's not even on both sides. It's not the same down the middle. And why does that matter to a Pilates instructor? Because you want to be able to control this axis and do it symmetrically because of the stability that gives you controlling your movement through space as well as the integrity of the straight line axis through the hips that everything else feeds off of within the body itself. The other endpoints is what I'm pointing to. But do you get that? That symmetrical is important in terms of stability moving through space and range of motion, all of it, right? Oh. 
Why am I talking about that? I guess because I opened up my bag and started looking at some of my some of, of my display things. So the point is what? The point is that organic expression that's rotational, that's obvious that you can see and find in rocks and date goes back by that thing up to 390 million years ago. And the ancestor of the Nautilus, which I think is still, hopefully, swimming around in our oceans. I point to the stability of the axis around which the life form grows. And that the symmetry of, of the growth is an indication of mobility through space. Good thing I had something. Oh, I had toys. I was showing toys and talking about ammonites and, and that those things are, are, um, they go back a long way. And my point to you is it was true back then, is still true now in terms of life organizing itself um, out from uh, a center, spiraling out. So life spirals out and control as a grip goes inward. And to the extent those balance each other, you have a, a static stability. Maybe it's not static, a dynamic stability. Stable, maybe not static. Dynamic and stable. So a long, long, long time ago, I would talk about rotation, stabilizing movement. And in a, in a crowd of 20 plus, with a few boys that are about eight in the front row, ha hanging on every word. I came up to him and I said, I can't get this to work. And I would hold it like this and then I would let go and it would flop over. Said, Wait a minute, I'm trying. And so immediately they're already way ahead of me, right? And, and again it would flop. I said, I don't know how to get that to work. <laughs> and so they both in unison said, you gotta spin it. And, of course, that works. Because rotation stabilizes movement. That goes way back. Rotation stabilizes movement. Rotation stabilizes movement. What is our body, our body, but one big sophisticated thing like this? And I guess in MMP, I'm talking about the body's ability to create rotational dynamic, not only at the hips, but necessarily and obviously at the shoulders, the ears, the knees, the ankles, and the metatarsals. Endpoints of rotation. Where the rotation happens, that creates the axis around, or around which that rotation is being defined by. The closer we get to that axis, in terms of the better our grip suits the diameter of the axis, the more control we have. I didn't mean it to be. Here's another one, a favorite shell of mine, right? This is, okay, okay, show. 
this is a beautiful show. Right? And, um, and yet, its rotation there, there, can you see that? Its rotation is around that axis, but not symmetrical. Now, if you're all going, this is way too simple-minded for me, it's okay, I understand. Um, but to me, Pilates is very simple-minded in that it's pursuing or reflecting as uh, the target is what? Control. And because it's conditioning, it's training to survive in the jungle, You do the conditioning to be pre to be prepared for whatever else comes up, whatever comes up. It's planning, it's preparation, and you don't have to be around too long in the real world to see that um, lack of planning and preparation really challenges the odds on surviving. My number one title today, and my only title. An explanation isn't wanted until it's needed. So, and I don't really need to understand anything unless I need to. And... And want to, I guess I should add to that, because my my words that came after were, welcome, welcome to the Pilates culture, because that's the norm. Um, I see Pilates, ex the culture, existing primarily from a point of view of a tradition that's handed down from one generation to the next, without any explanation of itself beyond some principles that Freeman and Eisen and Romana came with, came up with, trying to trying to describe what they could not explain. Pilates is interwoven with the whole dance culture. Not that I know anything about dance, but just from a way outsider's point of view and an available history, that's obvious, right? And so in the, in the absence of any perceived explanation in, in Joe's book, Romana's book became the, the baseline or the means of, of granting Pilates this lovely place where there are some principles that you strive for and maybe you add some and maybe you leave some out and all of it is really subjectively yours to pursue on some subject that is ultimately unknowable, unexplainable. And there will always be that part of the spectrum within Pilates like anything else. To survive as a Pilates instructor, I encourage you to know more than 
what is considered to be common knowledge. which would make it private knowledge, and that is a point of view of Pilates that offers an explanation for what Pilates is, based on Joe's book. Just three things out of Joe's book. So what what swept the world by, to me, its, its vagary and, and sincerity without um, explicative capacity, which is for good reason, I think. The best I could do is come up with a long definition that tries to point out what exists right there within Joe's original work. And now if you're watching and you know that, what is it? The definition of MMP is uniform eccentric loading flowing through progressive patterns of movement. So my, my title, an explanation, isn't wanted until it's needed. Well, who wants an explanation that would, that would restrict someone's interpretation until someone leans on your interpretation and you seek to defend yourself for whatever it is you think of yourself as a Pilates instructor. Pr principles are indicative of something. In MMP, the thing is an ideal that exists within Joe's original work. Because it's an ideal you can feel as an experience. And the experience is complete coordination of being, thinking, and observing. For those brief moments, as a state of being in the body, in the moment of the doing. Diving in isn't a matter of having a scuba tank on and, and, and no limitations. That was yesterday. Uh, resonance fades, meaning vibration dies away. I mean, you probably hear that. I didn't hear that hard. And it's a very resonant high C, but over time it fades. What's most important is that you understand the explanation for yourself, because it gives you a grounding in the method, direct from Joe to you, as an experience. As, as written in his book. Right? I'm just there in the dark holding a flashlight, it seems, on what's written in his book and a way of looking at it that gives acknowledgement to. I mean, there's nothing in the principles that aren't consistent to the idea that you're in the pursuit of, the ideal that you're after in your expression. The practicality of coordinating your body, your thinking, and your observing is just the heart of the magic of being an MMP instructor. And everything else is derivative, comes after. Even MMP comes after what's in Joe's book. So make whatever you want out of Joe's book. But MMP takes just three things out of Joe's book to construct its POV, point of view. And it's from that POV of MMP 
that comes this marvelous insight into biomechanics. How the body engages itself to move through space. Now maybe it's only within the context of Pilates that this matters. But to me, CT is, a, is biomechanical. It's how the body moves no matter what's going on or what you're in the pursuit of. Meaning you could leave Pilates or never be exposed to Pilates and still have tremendous insight about how the body engages itself to move through space. Why does it engage itself that way? To make the load of your body as light as possible. Why does that interest us as a Pilates instructor? Because on number two in the presentation, Contrology develops the body uniformly. Yes? No? Does it say that? Do you have that book? Go find the words. And to me, that is just pointing to the obvious of Pilates' his whole body, and the basis of that comes right out of Joe's book, right after he defines his work. In the paragraph prior, Contrology is complete coordination of body, mind, and spirit. There's no the in there. Just don't add words that aren't there. And the more you don't do that, the more you see that he could, he could be, to me, he is talking about, referring to what you're aiming for as a state of being in the body in the moment of the doing. That's the experience. MMP says Pilates is, is an experience, and that's the experience. And everything else is okay. There's good news and there's bad news. If Pilates has an essence of its own, and the bad news is that Pilates has an essence of its own, so I'm robbed of pretending that it's arbitrarily what I say it is. But then the good news is I'm not competing against somebody else that's arbitrarily saying what it is to them. There's this huge um, shift in perspective, as in anything, at different plateaus. It's human nature to be self-serving and use what matters most to you and even be a little protective of it or secretive about it. Especially because why toss pearls among pig's feet? You know, recognizing discernment and discretion. The question for you individually as a pursuer of doing Pilates, and then secondarily if you're teaching, is, is that, is my effort, is my movement, does my movement resonate with Pilates? There you go. Does my movement resonate with Pilates? That's the question.
And of course, right behind that is their assumption, is there anything to resonate to? I think it's good to embrace a perspective of spectrum because it helps give you a sense of place within it. Having an explanation of Pilates in your hip pocket, like understanding the MMP point of view, is having a point of view in your hip pocket, does not stand in the way of you improving in any way you want. Because you'll probably be the only one aware of the explanation and that will be part of the basis of what you choose to do as a student or an instructor. And so in the doing of it, if you're making something up and you, you get through it after it and you say, gosh, I wonder if that was Pilates. Who knows? Who knows? Were you in the experience that I consider what happens when you have a complete coordination of being, thinking, and observing? We're in and out of it, or briefly glimpsed it, and then and then lost it, right? You dive in, and then poof, it pops, and you come back to the surface. As the instructor, you're waiting for the student to come back to the surface, thinking ahead to where you're going next, so that when they come back up to the surface and their eyes look for yours, as though you were there with them and on that dive, Right? To meet them in that moment and say, okay, now let's go do this. I keep thinking of Jonathan, a patron of mine, who doesn't teach. He's just in it with his significant other. Um, and there are students of it from everywhere and anywhere, right? They do it for themselves. And yet it is interesting that they do it as a couple. Once your mind has something to attach to in terms of what ideal am I reaching for in the movement that I'm making. And then, more importantly, what am I listening to? So, Krista pointed me to this book on a dancer that had a fascinating stories, stories, plural, and one of them about dancers coming from having a story that they were portraying into Balanchine's world with the composer, Russian I think, um, that just wanted bodies to move to the music and there was no story. Why am I going off on this? In Pilates, the story is the pursuit of the ideal expression of the movement. So part of it would have to be complete coordination of body, mind, and spirit. And part of it would have to be contrology develops the body uniformly. And part of it would have to be the sequence itself. I mean, that, that is the movement. The first two paragraphs in the MMP presentation are explicative. The subjects explain, you know, they state things right out of the book and they offer some kind of explanation 
for what that means. And then there's the sequence. And you can offer some kind of an explanation for what that means. But like we talked about yesterday, knowing the sequence by heart, memorize the transitions, and then being able to move through the mat in flow, right? Without doubt or worry about what comes next, because you know it, and even if you have to pause a little bit because you're wondering, your body almost always leads you into what's next because you've practiced the transitions. When I get in, when I'm doing hundreds on the reformer, the over and up into overhead comes after that. In my world, that's what I do because I can. But coming out of that, I go right into short spine and put straps on feet and work with bent knees. I do short spine. I'm telling you this because in my pattern of doing the hundreds under two springs, not four, so I shift springs before hundred so that I can have a seamless transition between hundreds into the rollover. It's, or the overhead they call it, on the, or you could call it jackknife, but on the reformer, the overhead. As your feet go over your head. But then instead of staying in that, I come out of that in the short spine. Why am I telling you all this? Because in the hundreds, knowing that the hundreds are this ten count down to a point, of being ready to, and it being the time to move on. It's not always, but sometimes there's this dive into doing the hundreds where I realize I've just surfaced and gone right to the next exercise without even thinking about it. Or maybe I've just stayed down and continued on into the next exercise, still diving. But usually the bubble pops for me when I realize it wasn't my thinking that made a decision to move on as much as I had reached the place where I was ready to and did without thinking about it. So number one, I've, I've talked enough about all that. So knowing the explanation, having it in your pocket, um, you don't have to tell anybody and you can live in the culture of tradition as though that holds the same significance for you once you have in hand an explanation. Now I can't do this. I can't do this. I don't know how to do this, right? But if you knew how to do this, it wouldn't matter how, who taught you. It would matter if you could do it or not, right? I need a different puzzle. I need a puzzle that's simple enough for me. Um, and you, if you don't do Rubik's Cubes, because a lot of people, not many people I know do Rubik's Cubes. <laughs> My point is, once you know how to work the puzzle, it doesn't matter where you learned how to do the puzzle. What matters is that you learned how to do the puzzle. Not, where, not who you learned it from, not where you learned it, just that you know how to do the puzzle. And then P 
because looks are always deceiving. I bought this thinking I was getting a real Rubik's Cube, and instead it was filled with candy. <laughs> It may look like Pilates on the outside, but it may not be structured like Pilates for real. And so what do I mean by that? Go look at some previous recordings, because life can't live forever. Read between the lines and see behind the curtain. Evaluate points of view, and then add two and two. Direct your thinking, or, or keep looking for how others are directing your thinking about life, but specifically about Pilates. No one is going to take you beyond sucking up to aristocrats, but you. And you don't have to, and you can do that without conflict and just held in mind, right? I'm not, I'm not saying go out and be strident or, or pressy, you know. The more you know what you know, the burden becomes how you deal with it. Direct your thinking. Geist. <laughs>